Hi guys, so I want to start with a double apology. Firstly, I'm um, sorry that it has been a while since I have uploaded a video. I've kind of been on holidays, but that's no excuse. Um, and secondly, for those of you who are waiting for the HL AI course, I still haven't completed on it. I am working on it and I have been working on it for quite some time. I was hoping that it would be done for this September, but I'll probably need a bit of an extension on that, but definitely um, 2021, it will be done. Um, okay, I wanted to do, I've been, I've been planning this video for quite some time now, a, a video on um, Voronoi diagrams as an IA, as an internal assessment idea. I think I said before in one of my videos that this was a gift from the IB because this topic is new to um, DP Maths and it's a gift because it's such a nice um, it's such a nice IA idea particularly for applications SL however there's no reason why either an analysis student or an applications HL student can't do this okay before I begin guys if you could please uh, hit the subscribe button and like the video that helps me a lot and please check out my website uh, linked in the description below okay so here is a map and this is a map of Edinburgh and what I have highlighted here or what I have put in as points are schools these are high schools so what I'm doing here is imagine the uh, school that you have to go to is the school that is nearest where you live. Well, one way of finding out exactly which the school, the nearest school to you is, is to draw a Voronoi diagram. For example, if you live here, without the Voronoi diagram, it's not clear which of these three schools is your closest school. But with the Voronoi diagram, it's clear it's this one. It's Tynecastle High School. By the way, I've done Edinburgh High Schools because this Firhill High School here was actually my first the first school I ever taught in. Also note, if you're familiar with Edinburgh, you'll probably say straight away, there's a lot more schools than this. Yes, no doubt there is. As I always say in my videos, you go to a lot more effort and detail than I am going to do, um, or that I'm going to go to in this video. So you check out, uh, th the only reason these ones came up is because I typed in um, high schools in, um, I, w I went to Google Maps, Edinburgh, typed in high schools, and this is what came up. So, um, yeah, this idea, and I'm going to show you, there's plenty, plenty ideas that you can use for an idea diagrams for, but this is just one. Imagine that you want to know which school to go to. You, maybe you're moving to Edinburgh, which school you're going to have to go to, and you're moving to here, you're going to live here, then you're going to have to go to Fur Hill High School. Or if you maybe you want to make it maybe you really want to go to Forrester High School and you want to make an argument to I don't know the education board can you move there and you live right on this line this would be a good way to make that argument also maybe a few of your friends are moving to a particular place and they're living here here and here and here how many of you are going to be in the same school etc etc you could also look at the area the size of the area of this section here and here and see does the size of the school correlate with the with the area in the Voronoi diagram I don't know something like that anyway I wanted to start by showing you the kind of finished product and now I'm going to actually go through the whole process how I made all this how I created it and how you can do that for your IA okay so what I'm going to do is go to let's go to Google um, let's go to Google Maps now fine that's one idea with schools let's go okay let's pick a different place let's go with um, let's go at Melbourne okay here we are in Melbourne why Melbourne why not um, I did live here briefly as well that might be the reason I chose Melbourne okay so imagine you live down here somewhere and you want to 
open and um, let's say you want to open let me go down I don't know here you want to open a coffee shop or a hairdressers or I don't know whatever it might be a garage whatever you're interested in you want to open it in this area and again you don't have to go to to Melbourne go to anywhere you want go to somewhere you live you want to open a coffee shop wherever you live okay now um, what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of this particular area so screenshot like this now keep see at the bottom here guys you see that two kilometers make sure you keep that bit in the screenshot because we're going to use that um, when we bring it into GeoGebra. Okay, I'm going to save this to the desktop. And now I'm going to go to GeoGebra. So this is just GeoGebra.org. This is the home screen. I'm going to click this and GeoGebra Classic. Okay, this is GeoGebra Classic. I'm going to import an image by clicking this, by clicking this, this. My screenshot is this one here. Um, click open and here we go this is the screenshot you may as well put it you may as well put a on zero zero makes things easier now the next issue though I have is this is two kilometers you might as well make this to scale so that two kilometers in your map is two kilometers or is two units in your um, on your grid so let's say not quite Right, that's pretty close to me for me um, I think okay that's pretty good as I say guys look I can change this to zero as I say you go to more effort than I just did there to make sure that that's exactly two kilometers but look it goes from 20 to 22 so it's close enough for me okay here is the map All right now let's say you can I think I showed you this before guys in another video you can uh, just bring down the opacity here so that you can see the grid through the image obviously not too much but it might be useful to see be able to see the grid okay there now imagine so you find out where the coffee shops are but I'm gonna make them up imagine I have coffee shops I'm gonna say I have one nice one here in the beach there another one down here another one over here one there one there one there one over here beside the park another one down there okay let's say these are my coffee shops and these are the points and the coordinates on the grid okay um now to make a Voronoi diagram what I need is the equations of the perpendicular bisectors so let's pick some let's find the equation of a perpendicular bisector let's go with um, okay let's do C and G right so if I'm doing the perpendicular bisector between C and G what I'm looking for is a straight line that goes down here okay now I'm gonna just let me just bring, I want C and G, so I'm just gonna bring this here so I can put it over here. It's very big. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector between C and G. Check out my other videos, guys, if you want to know how to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector but essentially I need the gradient and I need the midpoint so the midpoint midpoint between C and G will be um, 1.69 plus 6.84 6.84 all over sorry not all over comma so that's the yeah, sorry, all over two. What am I doing? All over two, comma, because it's halfway. It's halfway between this and this, and then halfway between eleven point oh one plus thirteen point 
0.31, so halfway between 11.01 .01 and 13.31 over 2. And this is equal to, can I do that in my head? No, I can't. Get on my calculator. Put this here. Okay, 1.69 plus 6.84 all over 2. This is 4.265. 4. Four point two six five, and this one maybe I can do this in my head. That's twenty four, uh, twenty four point three two. So that would be twelve point one six. Come on, so that's the midpoint. That's the midpoint, and now I just need the gradient. So the gradient, m, is equal to. So the gradient, well. The gradient between C and G, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2, that's this, y2 minus y1, which is this, 13.31 minus 11.01 .01, all over x2 minus x1, 6.84 uh, minus 1.69. Can I do this in my head? Probably not. Let's get out my calculator. 13.31 minus 11.01 .01 over 6.84 minus 1.69. Press enter. 0 0.4466. Now 0 0.4466. You notice I just instinctively rounded there to four decimal places, probably because there was a zero here. You talk about those things in your IA. Okay, so that's that's the gradient between C and G. So the gradient, the perpendicular gradient, is equal to negative, the reciprocal of this. So it's actually negative one over 0 0.4466. I might as well put in the 0194 here. So the gradient is actually minus 2.239, minus 2, minus 2.239. So the equation of the perpendicular bisector, the equation is y minus y1. This is my y1 now. So y minus 12.16 equals m negative 2.239 into x minus x1 which is 4.265 I don't need to multiply that out I'm just going to put that straight into GeoGebra and I'll show you how it will give me that line here so it's y y minus 12.16 y minus 12.16 equals negative 2.239 equals negative 2.239 multiply by open bracket x minus 4.265 x minus 4.265 press enter and there we have it look that line is the perpendicular bisector of point c and g. Now what you'll do is you'll then get the perpendicular bisector of c and d and draw that line and then of g and h and g of f and you get the perpendicular bisectors of all the diff of all the points of all the combinations of points then you find the intersection of the points and then you that's how you create your Voronoi diagram. Exactly how much of this do you put into your IA? Well you definitely don't want to do this um, however many times it's going to be like, I don't know, 20 times, um, and that's your IA, that would become a long, boring IA that no one wants to read. Maybe do it once or twice to show, the, explain to the examiner that you know what you're doing, and then um, you can just use the function that I'm going to show you here to kind of complete it. Or you can put the rest of it in the appendices. It is up to you. 
make sure you check out my other videos where like my IA guide that kind of goes through exactly what you need to include and what not to include to make sure you hit all those kind of top boundaries for each criterion. Okay, nearly done. Let's just, let's delete this for a second. Okay, now I'm going to create a list of points. If you've seen my other videos, you may have seen me do this before. I'm gonna click this, this thing here and list the list. Then when I drag this over the image, it'll create a list of points. Make sure you don't go over A and B because they're with the image, they're not the coffee shops. So I do that and I get a list of points. Okay, now here, GeoGebra has this nice feature. You just click, you just type Voronoi, click this, and then list of points. The list of points is L1. That's the list it created automatically. So I click L1, and there we have it. That is the Voronoi diagram. Done. Easy. Now, the question might be, well, hang on, what, what have I even got here? Well, essentially what you've got is where are the closest coffee shops. So here the closest coffee shop is this one. Here the co closest coffee shop is this one. What you want to find is, actually if we get a circle, if you get a circle through three points, let's say this point, this point, and this point, the center of this circle is equidistant from G, H, and F. It is the same distance from each of these. So if you actually get the if you actually get, there's a circle for each of these, these are called vertices where they meet. So each vertex is the center of a circle um, around three points. So what you wanna find is which circle has the biggest radius and the circle with the biggest radius is then the place where you want to build your coffee shop because if you build your coffee shop, if this is the circle with the biggest radius and you build your coffee shop here, that's the coffee shop that is furthest from another coffee shop. Now, the only exception to that, and you need to talk about this because this is important, um, is the boundaries. Like, for example, if you built your the, probably just from looking at this, the, the place that's furthest away from other coffee shops is this one, is right at the edge here. But you probably don't want to build your coffee shop way over here. You want it to be somewhere central, but not right beside another coffee shop. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so look, there's loads and loads and loads of different ideas, guys. That's just two. I've seen a good good idea where there's three. You actually want to live close to, th to three points. So for example, maybe you have friends living in all these places, and let's say they're, I don't know, equal friends, they're, they're equally as close but you want you actually want to live beside three of them so in that case you actually pick the, the circle with the smallest radius um, something like that anyway that's kind of how you do it i am happy to answer any questions guys in the comments um, and always always very happy to hear different ideas that i haven't thought about so if you've got any ideas um please let me know oh yeah one other thing i wanted to show you because i just saw this recently is this, so this is a TED Talk. Um, this guy wrote this book called Soccer Matics. Now I actually haven't read the book because I've literally just heard about it, but it fits perfectly with what I'm talking about here. Um, Voronoi diagrams. Any of you football or soccer fans who remember this great Barcelona team with Messi, surely you all know who Messi is. Um, this is actually, what the, this, this team was considered one of the greatest teams of all time and this is how they lined out and this is a Voronoi diagram showing you kind of the space that those players are closest to I think that's a I think that would be a brilliant idea not not necessarily that you have to focus on this Barcelona team but any team or if you're into if you're interested in management or managing a team that you can actually position players in different places and see how that see how the Voronoi, Voronoi diagram changes as you move the players position so you can kind of see wh which position um, each player should start in, something like that. There's really, really uh, lots to work with there. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, I did want to just say, oh yeah, one question people always ask me 
about Fournoy diagrams for an IA is, is it too easy? And the, look, the, the answer is the maths involved is not necessarily that difficult. It's equations of lines, this stuff, midpoints, um, gradients, circles, areas. It's not necessarily that, diff that difficult, but the, when you put it all together into a Vorn, big Voronoi diagram, look, it's not, it's part of the, it's part of the course. It's part of the applications standard level course, which means it's commensurate with the level of the course, which means it's fine. And I, I always give the advice, you're better off, you're definitely better off to choose something that's too easy than too difficult, because you are going to be able to go through the criteria. You are going to be able to show, you're going to be able to communicate this. You're going to be, be able to present it well. You're going to be able to show personal engagement. Certainly if you're I don't know if it's that if you're doing something on like this that soccer idea or if you want to open a coffee shop definitely you can show personal engagement um re reflection is always um whatever your ia is you can definitely include re reflection and then for standard level all you want to be able to do is well you need maths that's commensurate with the level of the course and this is and you just need to show good or thorough understanding um, for five or six out of six in criterion E. So that's it. Okay, sorry guys, that video was probably longer than I wanted it to be. Hopefully you found it useful and I'll see you guys in the next video.